Hey, what's going on? It's Paul Allen, play-by-play guy for the Minnesota Vikings. Welcome to Virtual Vikings Game Plan. Cy Amundsen with the Vikings Entertainment Network is here, as is Ron Johnson with the Vikings Entertainment Network and Fox 9. Now, we want to thank those of you watching us via Fox 9, Fox Sports North, or at Vikings.com. Those of you following the game plan, you know we are putting a wrap on the NFC North. So let's take a look at some 2019 statistical equity between the Lions and the Minnesota Vikings. The Lions finished 312 and one last year, Ron. When you look at those numbers, what jumps out? The fact that they were 32nd in passing defense that has to get better. I mean, it jumps out at me for one. You, you draft a guy at Ohio State, Jeff Okuda, who was the, who was the number one uh, pick for them. I would say, yes, you lost Slay, but Slay wasn't happy. And so that I think that was a little bit of 2020 as well when your guy's not there and then he's also not happy and a lot of the guys on the team love him. And so you just don't have that chemistry anymore. And it becomes the Matt Patricia, my show, or you got to go. That's why I think they struggle. But now I think this year you bring in a guy like Jeff Okuda who's going to come in with fresh blood, that Ohio State kind of bravado, sticking his chest out. He's going to want to shut guys down a la Xavier Rhodes. I think they get a lot better in the passing defense. Ron, I know Darius Slay wasn't happy, but to have the 32nd ranked defense and then trade your all-star corner on the first day of free agency felt like having an already slow racehorse and then right before the derby, just duct tape and his legs together. So I thought it was a disaster. But then you're right. They add Okuda. They get Trufant. You know, they got a decent corner guy in Coleman. But there is a kid in Lions camp right now named Amani Oruarie, and he is doing what Cameron Dantzler is doing in Vikings camp. He was a fifth-round pick two years ago, and he is making plays all over camp. So if a few of those guys can step up, they you're right. They don't need to be – the fifth best pass defense, but they go to 32 to 20 or 18, they might be a tough matchup. You know, with the Lions offense, kind of starts and stops with Matthew Stafford, right? 19 TDs, five picks, but only eight games last year. He was kind of an outside candidate for an MVP, was playing that well. Daryl Bevel, the former Vikings offensive coordinator, leads that offense. And Ron, it seems Matthew and Daryl have kind of gotten together well. Yeah, Matthew Stafford, we know he has weapons, and so that's first and foremost. And then you have Bevel, who you look at what Seattle did. The Seahawks always had the perfect kind of play call for the right situation. I think that's what Bevel gives to Stafford. Also a guy I think Stafford trusts, and he likes him in his helmet. If you have a guy in your helmet talking to you and you guys do not get along – it's going to be terrible for that quarterback on the field because every time you're telling him something, the whole time he's just waiting for you to stop talking so he can then call the play he wants to call. I think Stafford really enjoys Bevel. Uh, But when you, like you said, 19 and five, you double that season, that's 38 and 10. You have a guy by the name of Kenny Galladay, and I've braved about this kid since he was a rookie. He's getting bigger, stronger, and faster. He's kind of a a lower level right now, Julio Jones, who's kind of getting ready to burst back onto the scene I, I really think this offense can be good, but they're only going to go as far as Stafford takes them. Well, I mean, I think the Seahawks always make the right play call with one glaring Super Bowl exception, Ron. <laughs> but, uh, that was a good play call. That still is let, a good let, play call. If the yes, receiver Lockett runs the should, right route, that's a touchdown. Lockett should have gone and got the ball. Let me stump for Daryl Bevel here for a second. At what point – do we start recognizing the fact that he belongs in that quarterback whisperer category when they talk about gurus in this league? I mean, he worked with Farvin Green Bay, helped with his resurgence here. He was one of the only guys who went to Russell Wilson's pro day, brings him in, turns him into a Super Bowl champion and MVP. He comes here and he does this with Stafford in limited time. As a Viking fan, the one real concern I have facing the Lions this year is Daryl Bevel with those receivers and that quarterback. I, I just think he's, he's a champ. Uh, Ron, to close, you mentioned Jeffrey Okuda, the third overall pick in the draft from Ohio State, with Darius Slay gone to Philadelphia. You've watched Okuda markedly more than us. What kind of a player is he, and, and what makes the rookie good? He has strong hips. He has a great center of gravity where if you bump him off of the route, he's still coming back downhill with you. Kind of like we saw Mike Hughes do to the rookie uh, Justin Jefferson in practice this week where he undercut the route because he knew the route. Jeff Okuda has that type of ability to reroute and understand. And so the NFL is a little different. 
But just like we see Mike Hughes in year three, you know, kind of turn it over and get it going. I think we see the same thing coming from uh, Jeff Okuda, where he's going to be that guy, where he's going to be able to read these routes. And Patricia's defensive mind, I think, is going to help kind of put him in the spots where you saw a lot of the Patriots guys like a Gilmore um, just take over.